Hello and welcome from Gaukovec, which is between Wuj and Kolushki. This is the local museum and what's interesting about this area for somebody like myself who is into military history is this was the location of a battle during the battle for Wuj in 1914 and uh, this museum uh, partially uh, commemorates it but it also has other local uh, events as well but as you come in here you see we have the forest battle from 1914 the 6th Siberian division against the 3rd guards division of General Litzman and 23rd November 1914 uh, Gaukovec and so let's go inside doors are open and uh, so we're greeted with some maps. I'm gonna give you an overview of this museum because I think it is particularly interesting. And uh, so I won't tell you everything, of course, because then you'll know everything and uh, you won't wanna come, should you be in the area. So uh, obviously for me, as a historian of the uh, uh, military period, 20th century, it's that above all which interests me. But one thing we do have actually is an original document here from uh, the 12th of, oh sorry, the 22nd of May, 1815, Frederick August, who was the uh, person who looked after this area uh, for Prussia. And uh, he's asking the people who live here uh, to, uh, be as uh, nice to the Russians who are coming in to take over the area as they had been to him. Now, uh, one or two local things is there was actually from this area a series of local murders were committed in the 1950s and uh, which were based around the railway station. This is only a small village. And um, anyway, I'm going to do a video on the subject of these murders which come here. They did actually capture the murderer and there's a photograph of him there after he's been caught. But we have a, a newspaper article uh, from the 1950s. Uh, this was before he was caught. He was in fact caught in the 1960s. Anyway, so that's something for a bit later. Uh, okay, let's have a look up here. The Battle of 1914. So there we have the German uh, generals at the top, Paul von Hindenburg, uh, Erich Ludendorff, and uh, up here, Reinhold von Scheifen uh, Boyadel. He's not so well known, in fact, him, but the one below him here, we've got Karl von Litzmann, who gave his name to what the Nazis uh, called Wuj, a Litzmann stat. Uh, he uh, took part in this battle, and from this battle, here we have positions here from 1914 and so this is a very large area there we've got Moava for example and um, uh, the area around Wuj that's Wuj, Brzezina and we're down here uh, so uh, that was the positions then this is after the Battle of the Mazurian Lakes and uh, Tannenberg, as it became called. I don't think it's a good name, but anyway, I've done it in other videos. I don't think it's a good name, which happened up here. And the result of the Battle of Wuj was, uh, it was a major German victory, in my opinion. And we have here a rather curious, I hope this is going to come out all right. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a reflection of me on it, but anyway. Um, the railway line, uh, which is very close to here, which is something I know quite well, but there we have uh, this drawing, uh, and we've got General Litzman with his sword urging people on, and in the background we've even got this, there was a hen house that General Litzman used as his uh, command post during the battle. Uh, here we have now a German... Uh, uh, map there we are for this division on the 23rd November 1914 and okay go go Kovacs up here and so it shows shows uh, positions and yet another map of uh, what was happening on that day and of course 
I mean, this, uh, the casualties, uh, it was about 35,000 German dead and the Russian was there's almost well, more than three times that, 110,000, something like that. Sorry, not dead, losses, losses, sorry. Because uh, these people can't fight anymore could be because they're prisoners or could be because they're wounded. So losses. But all the same, it's you know very large amounts. Not only that, the uh, terrain, it was actually fought over, coming back to this map up here. You can see uh, from Vodswavek, uh, which is there, so the battle is a very, very large area. So, uh, so to Kalish, from Wotswavik to Kalish, that's so a very large area. It was fought over. Okay, so there's some so, um, uh, army. Once Poland became independent uh, in uh, 1918, and there from some soldiers from the 1920s. And but what I find here particularly interesting is this really big photograph up here. And in the photograph, we can see Russian soldiers. We see the railway station. Notice it's been written in Russian and in Polish. And we can see the damage to the you see the big hole up there, and you can see bits of the wall knocked out here. And if you see the railway station today, you can still see where the damage was. 106 years later, you can still see where the damage was because it's in a different brick. The brick looks different, even though the outside has been cleaned up very nicely. It got a bit of a ammunition that they found. Uh, it's all safe. Uh, you had a look at that because I, I did go one place where they, the ammunition hadn't still had the charge inside. Story for another time on that one. And I got a few. I got uh, there's the Russian PPS. Sorry, the Soviet PPS uh, submachine gun. And here we have the Sten gun, which is So, came from Britain, but many of these uh, were actually manufactured if can't here in Poland. And there's a Polish ammunition uh, magazine and manufactured here, uh, underground, of course. So we've got some of the things you might sort of typically find in the museum. Ah, there we have some bayonets and... Uh, a wonderful example of a German helmet from the First World War. So we have this, the cloth bit that went over the top. Something you can see, in, for example, in the film Paths of Glory uh, with Kirk Douglas, I think it was 1957. You can see them, uh, these uh, very clearly done like that. But under it here, we have got the original, whoops, German helmet which I'm trying to show you, but I uh, can't show you because I've only got one hand on it. Uh, well, never mind. You'll have to come here and see it yourself. And there's a Russian, there's a Russian hat, which is uh, uh, just a flat cap. <laughs> so, Second World War, and there we have the uprising of the 18, uh, 1863. So I'll take you, oh, here's a, there we are, a, a, a Polish soldier in British Second World War uniform. It's come through here. And in here, we have got some stuff which has used agricultural implements from, uh, from before the Second World War. So it's this thing here was used for making sausages. And this thing here was used for um, drying. In fact, I've used that some, well, it was a bit, a bit more up to date the one I have than that. Uh, well, it wasn't mine, it was a place I was living uh, temporarily. And um, here we've got an unusual thing here, so it goes across there. It's, I think it's originally meant to be used for something to do with milk, but uh, it was used for as an uh, alcohol still. In fact, I've, uh, a friend of mine uh, used to buy alcohol from somebody who had something like that. Here we have sort of the typical um, uh, costume of people. Uh, well, it's not quite that way because I, what happened in this case is that they were looking for things to make some bands out of, you know, so singing and dancing. And uh, then uh, what they do is go from one village to the next village to the next village. So they so the blouse came from one place, the, uh, the waistcoat from another, the dress from another, etc. And eventually they put something together. So, uh, as is the case actually with tartan in the UK, which 
isn't traditional, but something more from the 19th century. A lot of this stuff that you see like that is from the 19th no, 20th, 20th century. <laughs> Uh, many museums in Poland, I've noticed, I've got these collections of cameras and uh, and they have some radios as well. Um, in, in the thing is, if somebody like my age can remember these, these things. Typewriter. And we've got some old radios, which uh, once more, I can vaguely recall seeing these things in people's houses. Uh, maybe not so much in the UK, but certainly... Uh, uh, certainly in Poland, they've got a collection of uniforms, including uniforms from the Second World War and uh, army uniforms. And I'm going to uh, finish this off, I think, with a look at these things here. These things are, this is a samovar. It's, it's really a sort of, it's typically sort of a Russian sort of thing. It's used for making tea. And... Uh, so it's got a really good collection of these things here, some of them from the 19th century. And on the wall, we have a um, something that was done from a photograph. So the photograph of the street, which is out here and which can be seen. Oh, electric typewriter. Now I learned to type on something like that. So. Uh, that's this um, museum here, museum in Galkovac, uh, near Łódź, and hope you found that of interest, and thanks for uh, watching lots more stuff from this area on this channel.